Okay, guys, I'm really excited about today's subject. We're going to talk about my top 12 essential oils and the Bible. Okay, so I love being able to connect spirituality with essential oils and giving them the credibility they deserve because essential oils have been around a really, really long time. So here we go. So going into essentials in the Bible, there's lots and lots of different references. It's, they're actually mentioned over 300 times in the Bible. Um, they're one of the most powerful forms of medicine in that day, right? They actually date long, long ago. Um, they've dated him all the way back to the tomb of King Tut when they undug him. He was buried with his frankincense, oftentimes. Back then, the old kings of, the, of that day or the old pharaohs were buried with their frankincense along with their gold because they valued their frankincense as much as their gold back then because frankincense is considered the uh, liquid gold, if you will. Not only because it's a very expensive oil, but because it's such a value health-wise and spiritually-wise to be able to bring that balance into our bodies and our systems. Um, talking about Mary washing the feet of Jesus and spilling the bottle of, uh, of nard or spike nard and knowing that that or understanding that that spike nard back then was about a year's worth of wages for them. So they were really, eh, they were really anxious that she spilled this expensive bottle or broke this expensive bottle of, of spike nard. Um, when she washed the feet of Jesus with her hair um, and then moving on into the three wise men and how they were able to bring gold, frankincense, and myrrh to the Christ child and how gold, frankincense, and myrrh were the, one of the three, three of the most valuable commodities there was back then. Again, stepping into frankincense and myrrh being almost like a liquid gold. Frankincense spiritually was known to anoint the birth of a child and myrrh was, was the oil that they used to anoint the death of a person. And so that was a fun fact that I learned years and years ago. However, something cute of my wife, she's such a sweetheart, but before we got into essential oils, um, she used to think, she jokes now openly, but she used to think that um, frankincense and myrrh, she used to think that they were extinct metals because they came with gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So they thought they were other metals as well back then. <laughs> However, needless did she know, years later, getting into essential oils, that they're beautiful, precious essential oils now that bring us so much light and love in our lives. Um, okay, so if you love this topic, make sure to take a second and mash that like button, hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications so you can see my other videos as they pop up every Monday, and share this video with your friends on your social media pages and such, because this is a this is going to be a really cool uh, ten minute presentation that I'm really excited to talk to you about. So jumping into this. Also, before we do, if you have a favorite essential oil from the Bible, make sure to put it in the comments below. Um, number one, frankincense. Frankincense is referred to over 67 times of the 300 references to um, essential oils in the Bible. Frankincense is probably the most used essential oil in the Bible because of its versatility. It's known for bee stings, bug bites, skin irritations, head tension, uh, digestion, a cognitive thinking. It actually has a, a constituent in it called alpha pinene, and that's a compound that helps promote the brain or the calming of the brain. So frankincense is known for its ability to help promote healthy brain function. Okay, so you want to apply that right on the back of your neck. It's a beautiful oil. Number two, myrrh essential oil. Myrrh oil is great at balancing, balancing our hormones balancing our um, brain, balancing our thoughts, balancing our process. Also calming. It's a very calming oil to help you rest and settle down, right? But it's a great balancing oil overall. Uh, number three, cinnamon. Cinnamon is known for balancing blood sugar and great at killing fungus, interesting enough, if you're ever dealing with any kind of fungal situations. 
the Bible references that holy anointing oil, and that holy anointing oil is known to have myrrh, calamus, cassia, cinnamon, and olive oil, all beautiful, powerful spiritual oils. <clears throat> number four. Number four is an oil that we don't hear about a lot in the U.S. Uh, called hyssop. And if there's an oil that it might be closest to, uh, it might be something like thyme or oregano, which are great at promoting healthy respiratory function. They're also great at getting rid of those unwanted pests and bugs that might come with our seasonal threats in that, uh, in that season of the winter, if you will. Um, but it, it's not one that we use in the U.S. necessarily very often. However, it's still used quite a lot, but in the Middle East. Number five is cedarwood. Cedarwood's referenced by King Solomon uh, for bringing about wisdom. Um, and today's studies will actually show you that cedarwood is known to promote memory and concentration. So if you're one of those people that are dealing with, um, if you're a student and you're dealing with school testing um, or studying, or if you're a business person and you're, you need to do a presentation, cedarwood is a great essential oil to be able to apply on topically or use um, aromatically as well in a diffuser. It's a great essential oil for that to promote that concentration and memory or remembering things. Number six, spikenard. Spikenard is an amazingly spiritual oil. It's known for its spirituality. It's also known to connect you to God, right? So putting a drop of spikenard under your tongue um, on, a, on a regular basis is a very powerful way to be able to reconnect you to your God maker or your God. Um, <clears throat> spikenard also helps to bring about a higher spirituality. Uh, and in the Bible, some scholars think that they're actually referring to lavender um, however, spikenard and lavender are very similar properties, uh, so it doesn't really make a difference. They're very calming on the mind. They're very settling on the mind to be able to help us to settle our bodies and our minds and our thoughts down to get a good night's rest. They're also very healing on our skin. Um, spikenard is that oil that, again, Mary dropped and broke, uh, that bottle of spikenard, or nard they, they call it. Um, that was a year's worth of wages for them back then. So it gave a lot of people anxiety. A lot of the apostles were like, oh, what is she doing? But then Jesus, you know, it's, it's great for healing abrasions on your skin as well. And Jesus probably had a lot of abrasions on his skin, seeing as they wore sandals back then and the long walking that they did in that time. <clears throat> Number seven is cassia. Cassia is actually an essential oil that has the highest concentrate of cinnamaldehyde and cinnamaldehyde is is known just like cinnamon cinnamon has cinnamaldehyde as well but it's known for that blood sugar rate levels um, to help balance those blood sugar levels and it also has a warming effect right so when i'm cold in the winter i'll take some cassia and i'll rub it on my hands and just really helps to bring about that warmth it's great as well if you diffuse it or you can apply it with and you want to use a, a carrier oil like a fractionated coconut oil or something with this because it can be very spicy on your skin so cassia gives you that kind of warming sensation or that warm blanket to wrap up in if you ever dealt with a traumatic situation cassia is a great way it's also very protective spiritually you can diffuse it in your homes and and it'll protect you spiritually as well as help you to combat and purify your air through that diffusion um, through the diffusion application. Number eight is sandalwood. Sandalwood is one of my favorite oils. <laughs> Not only because it, it's a natural aphrodisiac, so it, it boosts your libido if you're struggling with any of that, but also because it's so healing on your skin and your spirituality. It helps also to fight off and kill those mutated cells <clears throat> that lie within our bodies that they have a hard time getting rid of. It's a, it's a great um, motivation booster as well as great for your skin. Um, it was used oftentimes back then for um, a perfume or a fragrance, an air freshener, if you will, um, or even a deodorant they used it for oftentimes back then. And again, Solomon was one of those people that, that referred to sandalwood. And oftentimes they referred to sandalwood as a, a word called aloes, um, and, and so if you ever see aloes or aloe referred to in the Bible, they're talking about sandalwood with that, uh, reference.
Number nine is calamus. Calamus is one of those oils that was part of that holy anointing oil. And it comes from the roots of a grass and it's known as German ginger. So if it's anything like ginger, it's not another oil that's very well known, but if it's anything like ginger, it's gonna be something um, that is very, it promotes healthy digestion and healthy um, stomach discomfort. It helps to get rid of stomach discomfort. Um, it's also great at reducing inflammation. It's a strong reducer in inflammation, as well as a great insect repellent. It's part of, again, that holy anointing oil. And there's actually a section in the Bible in the Israel's camp with Moses that God commands Moses to take that holy anointing oil and diffuse it throughout the camp because they're dealing with the plague at the time. And they weren't able to get rid of it until God commanded this. Moses did that. He diffuses it throughout the camp and they're able to kill off and get rid of that plague um, and that sickness that was within the camp. So that's quite an interesting um, perspective uh, or use of that essential oil. Number 10 is Rose of Sharon. And this is by no means a rose as we call it our, in our day. However, this was referenced by King Solomon as well and probably potentially used by a, a Queen Esther as well uh, for its floral properties. Uh, it's very floral in general. It helps to improve our mood. It helps to reduce anxiety and, re and reduce depression and incredible for healing on the skin, right? So if you have any kind of skin irritations or bruises or burns or things like that, minor skin irritations, you definitely want to reach for something like this or any kind of a floral essential oil. Number 11, galbanum. Galbanum is actually an interesting oil. It supports respiratory health. Um, it also promotes lymphatic draining. So when we we have our lymphatic system, it's actually a huge part of our, our immune system. And our lymphatic system, if we can if we can help to drain that, it starts to build up with these this toxic uh, liquid. And if we can help to drain that lymphatic system and our lymph nodes, then we can help to reduce our toxic load and allow us to get rid of that toxic load is, is instead to have a healthier balanced body. And number 12 is cypress. Cypress isn't a beautiful essential oil, but it's also a beautiful wood. It's one of our wood oils as well, like cedar wood. Um, and it's been believed that either cypress or cedar wood is the wood that the cross was built out of that Jesus hung on, unfortunately, on those last days of his life here on earth. However, it's also a beautiful essential oil when it comes to uh, promoting respiratory health. It also is a beautiful essential oil and one of the most powerful when it comes to healthy circulation. So oftentimes our massage therapists will use that and they'll apply it along our spine because it promotes a healthy spinal cord and it goes throughout our body. So you can use Cypress if you hurt an ankle or if you, if you hurt a wrist or a joint or something, have an injury, you can apply Cypress to that area and it'll help promote healthy circulation to that area to help reduce the, the healing time of that, that joint or, or injury. But it's one of, again, uh, if you're ever dealing with any kind of circulation issues, it's one of the most powerful cir uh, healthy circulation promoters that we have in essential oils. So with that, that's my top 12 essentials from the Bible. If you love this video, I hope you did. Make sure to like and subscribe. Make sure to share it with your friends and make sure to comment below what your favorite essential oil is or one you might want to try. Um, and uh, I'm Joey Weissen. I'm the snake oil salesman. I'm a certified holistic health coach and hope to see you at our next video. Hope you guys have a great day.